Uh, welcome, and we appreciate you joining us today at our Connor Creek Combined Sewer Overflow Control Facility, which in a rain event can handle over 7 billion gallons of a storm surge in a, in a given day. My name is Todd King, and I am the GLWA's System Resiliency Officer. I'll be serving as your Master of Ceremonies for today's event. And we are here today to put ink to paper to solidify one of GLWA's most important partnerships our organization has ever established, that with the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers, with whom we are collaborating to study flooding problems across southeast Michigan and formulate alternatives to help reduce flood risk. However, before we get into the details of our partnership, I wanted to take the opportunity to acknowledge a number of our public officials and partners who are here with us today. Uh, Michigan Senators Stephanie Chang and Sylvia Santana, if you could stand up. Uh, Michigan State Representative Donovan McKinney. Tyrone Carter. Karen Whitsett. Jamie Thompson, Mark Tisdall, Stephanie Young, and Douglas Wozniak. Yay. I'd also like to recognize Oakland County Water Resource Commissioner Jim Nash, the Dr Executive Director of SEMCOG, Amy O'Leary. and the Chief of Staff at Eagle, uh, Jillian Gainsley, who's also representing Governor Whitmer. <laughs> Is there anybody I forgot? If so, please stand and if not, I'll move on. All right, now I'd like to invite our two U.S. Congressional representatives up to the podium to give brief remarks. First up will be U.S. Representative Debbie Dingle. It's your district. No, no, no. And then it will be followed by U.S. Representative Rashida Tlaib. Thank you. Actually, we're known as double trouble for a reason. You know, I didn't know I was going to say anything, so I, I just I went back to an op-ed that I wrote on July 13, 2021, in the Detroit News, which said, to get flooding funds, the region needs a plan. And, you know, we've seen, we keep having these, you know, in 2021, it was once every 100-year storms. The storms we had last year, it was once every 200-year storms. But somehow these once every 100-year storms, 200-year storms come every year. And I remember calling uh, the county, uh, the last one, because we're used to Dearborn and Detroit getting flooded. And I said, and it would have been Washna that had said to me, uh, this is once every 200 year flood. And I said, what are we going to do? We're going to declare a FEMA emergency. What are we? And they hadn't even heard about it because the normal areas that flooded hadn't flooded. And if you went down river, it was a total disaster. And then we had a second day. And I mean, it also, at one point, I was talking to the Michigan State Police and I'm reading Canton was in helicopters and I'm with Assad and we're in, like when we got over to Van Buren, the water was higher than my head. And these storms are, are, are coming, and the water doesn't stop. Oops, I'm at the city's edge, so I'm not going into Dearborn. Oops, I'm in Dearborn, not going into Detroit. It's, it, it's a problem. We have aging infrastructure, and we cannot solve this as individual cities. It's a regional problem. It has to be addressed. And if everybody wanted, what's the federal government going to do? What's the federal government going to do? They needed a plan. Sam Cog's also here. We um, it, it, actually there's a meeting that started with all of the critical players as a result of my being a pain in the ass um, with the governor. I mean, she ended up there. It's the truth. I mean, I am, and she listened. And Candace Miller, this cannot be partisan. It must be nonpartisan. 
And that meeting with all of the interested parties continues as people talk. And today, this study, and it's great to have the Corps here and not have the Corps of Engineers, I don't know the right adjective to use, upset about what the subject is. This is a subject where we are all working together. And I'm excited, Rashida and I work, supported the effort to get the money here for this study. It is an important study because the reality is global climate's real, even if people want to say it's not. The flooding is increasing. It's every year, not every hundred years. And we need this study to develop a regional plan to deal with it. So I'm excited to be here. I love everybody that's here that's working on this problem. We are all working together. Partnership is what this is about. And thanks for inviting me. And I'm really glad to see that my July 13th op-ed is becoming a reality. Thank you. Yeah, she pulled it up and she goes, remember, I made you look at it. And I said, yeah, I do. Um, no, thank you so much. We do want to recognize Terry Campbell, who's from Senator Stabenow's office, who's been just a wonderful partner and really just teaching me a lot about how these processes uh, move. And so I just want to thank you all. I mean, we have, and, and this is not, you know, I deal with our FEMA region, our EPA region. Our Army Corps region is incredible. Uh, they do such an amazing job. Uh, it's not just here, but our partnership with them on Ecorse Creek and so many other things. So I want to thank our, our folks at the, our region. We have, I, I personally am biased, but maybe, but they really are responsive. I mean, everyone there, all, all of you guys have just been incredible. Um, you know, one of the things to know is when, when FEMA, and I know they're not here, you know, but when FEMA comes to our community after a flooding, they'll invite us members of Congress or uh, Senator's office, and we go with them door to door. I remember going door to door to Highland Park, door to door to Inkster and Cherbourne Heights. And I still remember the stories. I can't stress to you all, as we do this study, like behind it is our people, our families, our residents, our communities. And I remember a woman in Inkster opening up and I said, hey, you know, we're coming to order. Your, your name um, was listed uh, as, as getting damages. She goes, yeah, I, I uh, you know, I have flooding in my basement. I haven't gone down there. I'm 70 something years old. I'm not going down there. Um, and I said, okay, and uh, talking to her about the fact that I unfortunately had to tell her that FEMA doesn't clean out basements. They don't. Um, and she's like, okay, and I checked up on her. Do you know when the weather got so bad, the water froze in her basement? Um, it was devastating. And her family's like, what do we do? We gotta take her out. Uh, and she had a, a, a daughter um, uh, live nearby. But again, it's those stories. I remember still, uh, this gentleman still calls me. I give out my cell still. And this gentleman still calls me, and I remember taking all of his stuff out of his basement in Highland Park. And you guys had to see it. It was all the black and white pictures. It was like, you know, and I said to him, where is your son? Because he said he had a son. I said, where's your son in Chicago? I, I called his son, Tyrone. You know I did. And I left him a message. And he couldn't believe it. I said, this is, this is your dad's congresswoman. I never told Larissa. Did I ever tell you this, Larissa? Oh. And I, I left a message for him, and I said, you know, you need to come down here and help your father. He won't, he's so stubborn. He won't, your mother is bedridden upstairs. He, he can't do this by himself. And I said, how dare you tell him not to just, because he told him, Dad, just keep all my high school stuff. You know, it's like, dude, you come over here and can't take your high school stuff. But I just want you to know those stories really stay with me. And, you know, if Army Corps and, and Great Lakes, you guys come with me on these doors with FEMA. I think it really would have us understand the importance of this study and just the seeds that we're planting so that we can actually address them. But story after story after story, and many of them are seniors, you guys, that can, do not have the, the capacity, the money, the resources to be able to, again, restore uh, their home. I still get calls to this day why we're working with groups like After the Storm and St. Paul and all, the, all of them about getting mold out of people's homes. There, it's just not just the water that you see externally. It's impacting people in their homes. Uh, and forever, like we're talking about years to be able to restore, uh, again, the health of the home and uh, making sure our residents are okay. So I'm really pleased that we got this. So incredibly proud. Uh, you know, Great Lakes uh, Water Authority comes uh, to D.C. At, like, probably twice a year talking to us about what we need to do on the federal level. So we always appreciate that, even though sometimes I, I'm very upset about certain things. But that's okay. We're working on it. We're working on the shutoffs where we are. Um, and so I just really do appreciate this. And the partnership I have with Congresswoman Dingell uh, is pretty incredible. Um, even as um, a lot of her areas are in my district now, 
just calling her and saying, hey, has this ever happened again? And for her to be able to be so incredibly uh, transparent and helpful has been, has been a blessing. So again, thank you to Army Corps. Thank you to the Great Lakes uh, Water Authority. I'm really happy. Let's make sure that this uh, study, and I'm a person that says we study a lot. Uh, you've heard me say this. Please do not put it on the shelf. Uh, make sure this study results in some action. Thank you so much. and thank you for our partners for joining us today. So as I mentioned at the start of the event, uh, GLWA is pleased to announce that we are partnering with the Army Corps of Engineers to study flooding problems across Southeast Michigan and work to develop alternatives to help reduce flood risk. At the conclusion of the multi-year study, which will involve representatives from communities across Southeast Michigan, the goal is to have a plan identified that will be presented for consideration for further federal and non-federal funding to build flood resiliency across the region and help protect the communities we serve and hopefully not sit on the shelf. Uh, the study is unprecedented in the state of Michigan and offers us an exciting opportunity to partner with the highly skilled and knowledgeable uh, professionals at the Army Corps who have done this type of work across the country. The flood mitigation study received initial funding of $500,000 in congressionally approved allocations for fiscal year 2024, with second year funding of $600,000 pending congressional approval for fiscal year 2025. GLWA will be providing a 50-50 match with in-kind services to complete the study. And now I would like to turn it over to GLWA's CEO, Sue Coffey, whose idea it was to engage the Army Corps after the historic rain events during the summer of 2021. Sue. Thanks so much. Um, so good morning, everyone. As Ted said, I'm uh, Sue Coffey. I'm the Chief Executive Officer for the Great Lakes Water Authority, and I'm just so pleased that you're here. Uh, the show of support is very, very much appreciated. And we see it not just today, but we have seen a lot of support from you. So a couple of things I want to say that I thought were really interesting um, that the Congresswoman talked about. So when you run a utility, you're really looking at multiple things, right? And people normally think about infrastructure and think about assets and the resiliency of assets. And we're talking about that here today. It's really important. But the financial resiliency of utility is also important. Michigan is having this tremendous conversation about affordability right now. Utilities have to be sustainable, right? So we have to have affordable services. We have to have financially uh, strong utilities. We have to have resilient infrastructure. But the third piece of it is the people part that you talked about. And that's not lost on me. I am, I'm an engineer by trade and training, but I am very much a people person. And we are here so that we can move this region forward for the people of the region. Uh, but I want to tie that together a little bit, and I want to say a couple things. Um, I want to thank you, Representative Tlaib, Representative Dingle, for your support over the years. And as you said, I was, I was with you in 2021 when we had a press event after the flooding. And it was devastating, absolutely devastating. And I want to thank you for your LIWAP legislation support. GLW is very supportive of that. And again, the, the utilities have to be financially viable to be able to support resilient infrastructure, to support the people, and the people then support the financial viability of the utilities. So it really is like a, like a ring, and we have to hit all three pieces. So thank you for that. Uh, I want to thank our federal partners, <clears throat> many of whom are not here, who have been very supportive of our projects really supportive at the federal level. Uh, we do come out to Washington, D.C. a couple times a year, and we talk, and we get tremendous support. It's really broad support for projects like our in-system storage devices. These are our control structures in our wastewater system. On the drinking water side, source water protection. And we built this grand connection, we call it, in our Detroit River Interceptor, and we had support from the federal, uh, our federal partners on that, too. So we really appreciate that. State, legislators, local, uh, officials, we appreciate your support too. We spend a lot of time with you. You give us a lot of your time. Many of you have come out toward our facilities. Uh, we come and we speak with you. We speak with you in person. We speak with you online. We, we spend a lot of time connecting with you because we know that that is that people part that's so important to the utility. And everything from um, water quality to water affordability to GLWA being supported as a regional utility. We're not a local utility, we're not a municipality, we're this regional utility, and we're the largest utility in the state. So we appreciate your support. 
We really do. And we see it everywhere we turn and we feel it. So thank you for that. Um, the one thing I want to say is we talk about things like affordability. When you're, when you're running a utility, affordability is about the long game. You know, these assets, we're here at a facility today, we're going to put these assets in the ground and they're going to be in the ground for 75 or 100 years. Right? We have to have the long game, right? So affordability for us is making sure that when we invest in assets, because that money is scarce, that it is the right next investment. And I think it was uh, Congresswoman Dingell who said, we have to have a plan. We have to have a plan so that we spend that money wisely, right? So we're always looking at the long game, and it's really important uh, that we keep that in mind. The study, as Todd said, is not going to be short. It's going to be a long-term study. It's going to be a broad study. Um, when I was uh, appointed as the, the CEO for GLWA, it was after the 2021 20, floods, and that was just an unprecedented, it was like eight inches of rain in less than a day. It was crazy. It was way more than the system could, could handle. There's no doubt about that. Uh, and as we looked around and we said, okay, what can we do to be more resilient internally, uh, which we are doing. We're doing a tremendous amount of that. We studied it. We said we've got this resiliency effort. We just reported to our board, and I'm our chief operating officer for wastewater reported to our board just last week. This idea that the plan we put together didn't stay on a shelf. Once a quarter we report out on it, or once every six months we report out and we talk about how we're making our system more tough from a power perspective, capital improvements, these types of things. But this is bigger. So when we looked around the nation after the 21, 21 flood events, and I thought about what can we can do, and I was inspired certainly by our, our, our federal legislators, we need to do better, we need to do more. But what are we gonna do, right? We live in a world of change. What are we designed for? I'm an engineer, as I said, by trade. So first question is, well, how big do we make it? Well, let's, let's do a study. Let's not do a study that takes us a decade. Let's do a study, let's figure out what we're gonna go for, and let's move the region forward. We're not going to be able to do everything. We can't snap our fingers and do these things. They're not fast, and we'll never be able to say we, we will never have a flood event again. You know, we just, in the last five days, the news tells us that. Mother Nature will throw us something that we cannot handle, no matter how big we build it. But toughness, resiliency is about toughness. Preparedness, which is what we're here for today, and how do we respond and recover quickly for the people? because that's what they need. Once that devastation happens, we have to be able to recover quickly. Uh, so that's why when I looked around and I, I leaned on the, the Army Corps of Engineers, GLWA builds a lot of big stuff, but this is bigger than us, right? We need our experts, we need our federal partners. Excellent resources and so happy uh, that we are here today. I've been looking toward this for a long time and it's a very exciting time for us to partner with such excellent partners. Uh, to help us to move forward and have this plan together. So with that, I don't want to spend a lot more time talking about things, but I do want to say this. This really is about partnerships. I think we talked about, uh, or you heard, the rain doesn't you know, stop at the boundaries. It absolutely doesn't. And at GLWA, you'll hear us say this, the pipes don't know the boundaries either. Even though we each have responsibility for certain pipes, and that's our job, and we know that. When that water comes, the region functions like a region. Just like the rain uh, system functions as a region, right? It comes across the region. It might be in the west today. Next year, it might be over the whole region. But the pipes function like that, too. And we have to think like that. And we have to operate like that. And we're working in that way. And this plan will help us do that. Look across those boundaries and say, what can we do regionally to mitigate uh, the risk of flood, as Todd said, right? It's all about the people. Um, so with that, I uh, have the absolute honor to uh, bring up to the podium Lieutenant Colonel Bandiff. He is the Detroit District Commander of the United States Army Corps of Engineers and the District Engineer. So with that, thank you. Well, good morning. I'm excited to be here today with all of our partners marking really the beginning of a journey that we're undertaking here to address the impacts of flooding in our communities. Alongside support to commercial navigation and ecosystem, res ecosystem restoration, one of the core civil works functions of the Army Corps of Engineers is flood risk mitigation. With the support of our elected officials in Congress in 2022, they expanded the Corps' authority to study rainfall-driven events which is critical to climate change, I'm sorry, which is critical to how climate change has impacted communities, as we know so well, the communities in Southeast Michigan. 
we've done this as the Corps of Engineers to mitigate flooding over the past 100 years, both coastal and in riverine uh, environments. Not only does this study aim to understand how we manage threatening waters in our community, we also strive to reduce the risk of loss of life, long-term economic damages to the public and private sector, and to preserve or improve our natural environment. Southeast Michigan has experienced repeated widespread flooding over the last decade, primarily from heavy rainfall and, and the riverbank overtopping. That flooding has been exacerbated by an undersized regional water collection system, below grade highways, and the impacts of climate change on a, a very heavily urbanized area of our region. This flooding has resulted in an economic burden and social hardship which impacts the residents, the business owners, uh, and important industries that we have here in the Detroit Metro. Since 2014, at least four deaths can be attributed to flooding. Uh, and the conditions we're experiencing continue to place people at risk. And this can be caused by isolation of communities, inundation of critical infrastructure, highway and road closures, and the ability of first responders simply to be able to come and provide emergency support when the calls come. This study is unique. Make sure those papers don't fly away. It's, it's, it's unique and it's a groundbreaking project for the Corps. First, the geographical extent of this study is huge. Uh, the scales defined by the Detroit, Rouge, Clinton, Rivers and the Lake St. Clair watershed. All of these watersheds overlap with the service area of the Great Lakes uh, Water Authority, our partner in this project. And the complexity of managing large volumes of surface water across our communities presents, presents challenges, but it also opens the door of opportunity. Because of the generous authorization from Congress to study this issue, all of us are afforded an opportunity to develop a regional solution that benefits the region as opposed to individual communities attempting to solve the problem on their own. I firmly believe that we will be more successful working together to build a regional system that addresses our needs. This project, it's going to succeed when we work together and working towards achieving a shared vision. We, we recently held a charrette, and that was just the, the first step at developing a vision for this study. And this, is gonna, this vision is going to be built upon by many more stakeholders in the coming months and days as we continue the scoping efforts. The outcome of this study is going to be a report with a recommendation to our elected leaders on how we envision reducing the effects of flooding. Getting to this point will require teamwork patience, compromise, creativity, and most importantly, endurance. I ask all of our partners to remain committed throughout the duration of this study. And finally, I am incredibly thankful for the help and support that we've received from our elected officials, both at the state and the federal level. We can't do this without you. The future recommendation, if it's further authorized, will undoubtedly have long-lasting positive impacts for all who live in Southeast Michigan. And I look forward to working with all of you to get this study completed so that we can put these changes in place and support the people who live here. Thank you, and again, we'll succeed when we work together. Right. Thank you, Lieutenant Colonel Banda, and uh, I would also like to uh, recognize uh, State Senator Santana, who arrived. So, we, as as the Colonel mentioned, we'd like to we look forward to working closely with you and the and the entire Army Corps team. Uh, I'd like to acknowledge everyone from the broader team who's with us today. So, if, uh, Eric and Susan, if you could stand up.
now, without further ado, I, as I said when we opened the program, we're going to put ink to paper on our formal agreement. If I could please ask uh, Sue Coffey and Lieutenant Colonel Bandiff to come forward. And I'd also like our legislators, as well as our Deputy CEO, Bill Wolfson, Commissioner Jim Nash, Semcog's Amy O'Leary, <laughs> and Jillian Gainsley. And uh, if you could all just stand, come on up and stand behind. Thank <laughs> you. 